Hey everybody, Frankie Day here on YouTube. Okay guys, uh, I'll take this gorgeous Friday afternoon. I got two videos to be done with feature day. Uh, later, on, later on this afternoon or probably early this evening, I'll have the final reveal for the short son of the flying boat. I'll have that for you out. Okay guys, this video right now, number one, consists of a find I had down in the basement for years that I built years ago. And um, this is a scale of 1 200. And uh, I went down there to the locker down there and just, and uh, I went and took some model ships I had laying in the stash pile. And I like my 410, my 310 destroyer. And it'll sense keeping up here to get broken. So I took it down below with, with, with the rest of my fleet. And uh, <coughs> most of my models down below in the Bosa locker, down below in my basement, is uh, ship models because they're big. They, they acquire, take too much room. I have a spring house out in the back, and uh, I got most of my brake control models out there. I got a 12-foot model of the USS Missouri, which Iowa class battleship, and uh, it's radio control, and uh, that's towed on a dolly, which I hook up back in my car, and it's a sight to behold going down the street like I'm towing a model ship, but the only way I can be able to take it is I have to take it with a boat trailer, and uh, so. I'll probably have pictures of that this year, guys. And uh, so anyway, uh, make up, get back to the uh, to the special video right now. As I was pondering down in the uh, Bosa locker and looking around, I was thinking about the work. I had a couple of models down there. I got a bunch down that need to be finished up, guys. I I went down there and I grabbed this one and I finished it up. I worked on about four hours uh, last night on it and cleaned it up a little bit. I had to put some lifeboats on it and tidy up the. The rigging on it. The name of this vessel is uh, is a vessel of fate, a vessel of disaster, a vessel of despair, and another Titanic tragedy. This is the Italian liner SS Andrea Doria. A lot of you probably know that ship. A lot of you don't. Uh, for you fellows out there who don't know nothing about it, I'll explain. Uh, the SS Anadoria was a class of the Christopher, uh, Christopher uh, I think Columbus class, because they made Christopher Colombo. There's two uh, sh exact replicas uh, of the same ship. They're actually the sister ships. And the Anadoria was second. The Anadoria was launched in May of 1951. And I believe she made over over uh, 50 crossings within six years to her demise. Uh, the end of Doria is uh, 722 feet long from stem to stern. It's not a very big ship. It's not a very small ship. But it wasn't built for size like the Olympic class liners and the Queen Mary, the Queen Elizabeth, the Bremen, and the uh, Normandy, and all the great transatlantic blue ribbon holder ocean liners that were 1,000 feet, 900 feet long. She was a little shorter than Lusitania. And uh, it wasn't built for scale and size. It was built for comfort and all its furnishings. Uh, in July of 1956, on its 57th crossing across the, across the North Atlantic Ocean, 50 miles off Nantucket Shoals, the SS Anadoria collided with the Swedish liner Stockholm. A stab of biting by the rules of the road, they decided to uh, take it on their own to do a little diversion. And that little diversion cost both ships uh, tragedy and peril. Captain Calmine was the skipper on the SS Andoria. He's assuming that the uh, Swedish line to Stockholm would pass on starboard, uh, pass on port. So, Captain uh, Norgerson on the uh, Swedish liner Stockholm decided the diversion of going to, going to port instead of starboard. And uh, so, actually, Captain Calvine on the land of Doria turned to starboard, leaving the starboard side to the Stockholm. And it was a heavy, heavy fog bank, and, and, and Nantucket Shoals and Nantucket right up Massachusetts and Maine, all through there, guys. There's something about it. What it is, it's, 
it's you got two volatile air masses out there you got cold fronts and you got a hot front and it causes a dew mixture of fog because they always didn't have heavy fog out there I, because I, I've, I've been to the North Atlantic Ocean a couple times <coughs> excuse me guys and it is foggy out there it's real foggy and uh, opposed to out there in the South Pacific so the fog didn't help there was no visual on it it was on my radar so Captain Norgerson on the uh, on the Swedish land of Stockholm left the charge of inexperienced third mate and uh, the legend goes that he didn't understand how to read the radar so he made the diversion by by turning a starboard and as he as they got close it was too late the, the uh, Stockholm struck the uh, Anna Doria opened up an 80 foot section of the hull and uh, the, the the bow the prow of the uh, of the Stockholm was built to break ice fields it was a very sharp bow knife edge it was designed to bust sheet ice field ice that accumulates out there off of the Newfoundland Ridge and she sliced right through the end of Doria left the sea deck killing about 50 people because all those staterooms down there were crushed and flooded and uh, Peter Gimble made several dives on her and he's the most successful diver he removed the person safe and uh, was rewarded with a handsome bill of fare inside the safe and uh, I guess one of the divers down there are saturated divers they dove down the 40 fathoms which is 240 feet that's how deep she was very shallow out there but still deep for scuba diving it requires decompression and uh, so he, they say that the, when the Stockholm speared on the port side of Wrath of the Bridge on the Andrew Doria on the starboard side, it went right through the other side of the ship, down below below the water line. Because as he went through the the, uh, the hull itself, he said he saw a massive opening right there. He says you can see the sea bottom right there. And so what it did, it, it took out about three watertight compartments. And the worst place in the world on the Doria was that they had the generator rooms in the area where the pumps were at. Now, and the pumps were aft like most ships were, and she was ran forward, which was an engineering flaw. They could have maintained pumps and sealed off that more tight, uh, tight, tight doors. And the ship would have made a float and probably acquired a tug tugger back to New York for repairs. But legend goes down to is that she, uh, the pumps were dead, the ship was idle in the water, she would take on water and she sunk. About 11 and a half hours she went down 40 fathoms of water, which is 240 feet, and that was it. Okay guys, enough history on the end of Dory. I want to come over and take a look at this thing here. And uh, you can see it right here. Built this from Taubman Plans. Taubman Plans was the only plan, plan manufacturer. The plans cost $150. These are real builder's plans. I got it off of uh, Abe Tobman's past, passed away, and this man has, has acquired uh, plants of all nationalities, all countries, all scales, and uh, and like I said, we got a good size, a, a good set of plans, um, a good set of plans. You uh, you'd be surprised how much realistic you can build a ship. Uh, the scale of the ship here is uh, I believe it's one two hundred scale, and uh, plank with frame construction. I use sheet plastic and cardboard for all the the superstructures, uh, the superstructures assembly, everything. And uh, she's a beautiful ship. And we'll come back and I'll show you how much damage it did to her. Well, that when that uh, Italian liner, I mean that when the uh, Captain Orgerson on the Swedish liner. Stockholm it went through here and hit across here this section here and opened up a whole big opening right there and went to the other side of the ship and that caused the ship to have a a list and she took on water and she sunk this is a beautiful ship a lot of divers lost their lives on this thing mostly were uh, victims of the rapture of the deep which is known as uh, you, you get pretty well narcissized guys the pressures of the water the human being wasn't designed to live in water 
We people say, well, how can hell can fish live in depths two to three miles deep? Don't imp don't implode or or something happens. Them. Reason why? Answer is because they're used to it. They're fish, and their system is used to it. So there's, no, there's nothing, for, no air at all for it to displace. And the human beings, you got air in your lungs. You get narcotized down there. You freak out, you swim to the surface, your lungs will burst. A lot of divers lost their lives on this in Nestle here. And uh, Peter Gimble was the most successful diver on there, and he uh, required the purchase safe. And like I said in the beginning of the video, he was awarded with a handsome bill of fare. And uh, he found that there's uh, silver, uh, the silver certificates, dollar bills, stacks of them, liras bank transactions, everything. And remarkably enough, there's been down in that safe for almost fifty years. And and all the all the papers, all the money or thing is is it's fresh as the day it was uh locked up in the person safe for, for safekeeping till uh, departure. Okay guys, I, I was working on this, I'm gonna put this my wife wants me to put it in our bedroom in there. So I'm gonna put it in a room. I went down below in the basement. I got a bunch of these things I built years ago when I was very young and uh, I was I feel like back years ago when I was younger I was a better builder than I am now I'm getting old and uh, so there's another vessel in my collection okay guys let's we'll bring it here back to Frankie Day here again here I am fellas in the flesh again okay gentlemen this concludes uh, a special video of my Anna Doria I hope you guys enjoyed the model Enjoyed a little brief history of it, and uh, she's still laying at the bottom, and she's deteriorating away. All of her wood furnishings inside the inside the ship is <clears throat> it's fall it's falling down and it's collapsed on itself. And the best way to describe it is like uh, picking up a house and dropping about 100 feet and taking the bulldozer and push it out. A lot of rubble. A lot of rubble. Okay, guys, this concludes uh, the Mrs. Uh, Miss Andrea Doria. Well, she's a beautiful ship. I forgot we even had this thing down there. I got stuff down there, guys. Uh, you'd be shocked what I have down there. Okay, guys, next video is going to be the final reveal on the Atalari 172nd scale short Sunderland Mark III flying boat. And uh, so I'm finishing up the antennae right now. I got the the canopy all masked off, the airbrush installed, along with the turrets and everything. It's all done. So all that's left is the uh, the Akagai uh, antennas under the wings, and also the uh, the antennas on top of the fuselage. It gives the gives the Sunderland her dubbed affectionate name as Old Porcupine. Okay, guys, so stay tuned for Porcupine. She's coming up next, and uh, I'm gonna start getting hot on Mr. Martin Lambert's Lambert's uh, 410 Buddy Group build. Featuring my uh, XAMT now Lindbergh uh, 410 Measurement in 172nd scale. So I'm start getting hot on that and to get some pictures posted out. I'll let everybody know that Frankie Day is working on that too. And I'll drag something else out of the closet and get that started too. Okay, this is Frankie Day signing off. God bless you guys. Make mama happy. Please subscribe. And I love you guys and catch you guys on the next video. Bye, fellas.